فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد We are in the explanation of the book Al-Fara'id Al-Bahiyya Fi Nazmi Al-Qawaid Al-Fiqiyya And the book is written It is written by the author whose name is what? Who remembers the name of the author? Abu Bakr ibn Abi Al-Qasim Al-Ahdal رحمه الله تعالى رحمة واسعة. We stopped at where he said وتابعيهم بالاستقامة وتابعيهم. That's how we read it. We say وتابعيهم. The reason why we read it as him and put a ضم on the mim is for the the flow, the وزن of the poetry. وتابعيهم بالاستقامة على سبيلهم إلى القيامة. So after the Shaykh, he sent down peace and salutation upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then he spoke and he mentioned the family of the Prophet Alaihi Salatu Wasallam. Alayhi Salatu Wasallam. And he went on to the companions in third position. And then after that he went to the Tabi'een. What is a tabi'i? Linguistically, the word tabi'i is a tali. Tabi' is a tali. What does a tali mean? It is one to follow. A tabi'i is a follower. It means a tali. But according to the fuqaha, fuqaha, according to the definition of the fuqaha, it is man It is the one who has, uh, who is met who has uh, been with a companion even if it's not lengthy even if it's not lengthy the uh, period of time in which he was with the companion that is the view by Imam al-Nawi rahimahullah Imam al-Nawi takes that opinion that the tabi'i is whoever has met the companion even if he wasn't there with him for a very long time. As for Tajuddin al-Subki, he says that it has to be what? It has to be lengthy. It has to be a lengthy. Abdul Wahab, Ibn Ali, Ibn Abdul Kafi, al-Subki. They refer to him as Qadi al-Qudat. So he has the opinion. And Nawawi has the opposite opinion. وَتَابِعِيهِمُ بِالِسْتِقَامَةِ وَتَابِعِيهِمُ بِالِسْتِقَامَةِ So we know what a tabi'i is. بِالِسْتِقَامَةِ What is istiqamah? Istiqamah is, is one of those comprehensive words. Istiqamah is one of those words which are comprehensive. And it means... Um, هي عبادة جامعة شاملة It's a form of worship A person is steadfast And he is In worship of Allah Tabarak wa ta'ala In terms of his aqeedah He's steadfast In terms of his external affairs He's steadfast And, exter- and his internal affairs He's steadfast إذن هذا هو استقامة عمر رضي الله عنه He said تستقيم عن 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 الأمر والنهي. عمر رضي الله عنه. His definition of استقامة is what that you are steadfast upon the command of Allah and from the prohibited uh, matters. ولا تروغ روغان الثعلب. You don't also you don't sway uh, like the fox. The fox doesn't move forward straight. It's always going sideways. Steadfast means you're straight, you're steadfast, you're upright. So istiqama and taqwa are what is what are known as the qa'ida, which is 
إذا اجتمعا افترقا وإذا افترقا اجتمعا like that استقامة أن تقوى they're synonyms of one another so here استقامة أن تقوى they roughly mean the same right now so وتابعيهم those who follow the companions بالاستقامة with steadfastness they follow the companions with steadfastness وتابعيهم بالاستقامة على سبيلهم على سبيلهم means what أي على طريق الديني على طريقهم they are steadfast upon the path which path the religion in other words in doing uh, what the companions did and staying away from that which the companions stayed away from in other words their following of the companions it is not مجرد الانتساب it is not just a mere attribu attributing and ascribing yourself it is not just a mere attribute, uh, uh, attributing but rather it is following them قلباً وقالباً You are externally and internally following them. You see? And that's why Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He says, He commanded us to, Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, uh, on the tongue of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that every single day, in our five daily prayers, in every single rak'ah, we have to recite this surah, Surah Al-Fatiha. Which we say, إِهْدِينَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Oh Allah, guide us on the straight path. So guide us on the surat, the path which is mustaqim. So it's a path. عَلَى سَبِيلِهِمْ The path. Which path are we asking Allah to guide us on? أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّيقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ وَحَسُنَ أُولَٰئِكَ رَفِيقًا أولئك الذين أنعمت عليهم إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم Those who you have bestowed your blessings upon They are the prophets They are the companions Righteous people, the martyrs Oh Allah, Tabarak wa Ta'ala huh? Guide me on that path That's the path it is So على سبيلهم On their path يعني على طريقتهم The path in which they were upon Oh Allah, Tabarak wa Ta'ala This is the Path we're asking him for, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is what he means, what? وَتَابِعِيهِمْ Those who follow them, بِالِاسْتِقَامَةِ In steadfastness. عَلَى سَبِيلِهِمْ On that path which the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was upon. Until when? For a period of time? How short? How long? إِلَى Until إِلَى الْقِيَامَةِ Until the day of judgment. إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ Which is the day of what? يَوْمُ الْحَشْرِ وَالنُّشُورِ it is the day of gathering and resurrection. The day we will all be brought in front of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. And we will all be accounted for every single thing that we have done and said. Oh Allah, until that day I meet you and the day of judgment comes, I want to be steadfast on their path. Meaning I don't want to change the last moments of my life. Some people are steadfast and they are upright. But then for a period of time. And when they are close to their death, they change and they turn. And the reality of the matter is that Allah doesn't observe what you've been doing in the past. What it really is looked at is what you've done before you died. As the Prophet has said, that the action is all about the final moments. It's before you die. Innama is what the Prophet said. And Innama is from those words that show exclusivity, al hasr. إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ Verily, a action is. It's all about. In other words, this is trying to say that all your actions that are counted and they are taken into uh, consideration are the ones that is done at what? بِالْخَوَاتِيمِ In the last moments. If a person can, went hajj and paid sadaqat and zakat and everything, but in the last moments of his life, he apostated, what would that benefit him? It would not benefit him whatsoever. And this is the long hadith of the Prophet where he says, إِنَّ أَحَدَكُمْ لَيَعْمَلُ بِعَمَلِ أَهْلِ جَنَّةِ حَتَّى مَا يَكُونُ بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَهَا إِلَّا ذِرَاعٌ فَيَسْبِقُ عَلَيْهِ الْكِتَابِ فَيَعْمَلُ بِعَمَلِ أَهْلِ النَّارِ فَيَدْخُلُهَا وَإِنَّ أَحَدَكُمْ لَيَعْمَلُ بِعَمَلِ أَهْلِ النَّارِ حَتَّى مَا يَكُونُ بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَهَا إِلَّا ذِرَاعٌ فَيَسْبِقُ عَلَيْهِ الْكِتَابِ فَيَعْمَلُ بِعَمَلِ أَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ فَيَدْخُلُهَا That a person, for the course of his life, he will be doing the actions of the people of Jannah. The action of what? The people of Jannah. And just before he's about to die, he postates and he starts to do the actions of the people of the Hellfire. 
and vice versa. The person does this opposite as well. Well, aksu sahih, the opposite is correct. It can happen as well. So that is one of the things that always puts us to fear and concern and worry. That we know we can die upon a path we were, always, we were never upon. And that is why we always ask Allah, Allahum hadina. Oh Allah, guide us and keep us on the straight path. And don't turn us away from this correct path. So that's why the Sheikh is saying, وَتَابِعِيهِمُ بِالْإِسْتِقَامَةِ وَتَابِعِيهِمُ بِالْإِسْتِقَامَةِ عَلَىٰ سَبِيلِهِمْ Upon their path. إِلَى الْقِيَامَةِ Until the Day of Judgment. Until, until the Day of Judgment. Qiyamah is one of the names of the Day of Judgment. The Day of Judgment has many names. Qiyamah, that day has many names. It's called Yawmul Hashr, Yawmul Taghabul, Yawmul Qiyamah. All of those are its names. Qiyamah is because we stand in front of Allah that day. That is why it's called Qiyamah. We will stand in front of Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we will stand in front of Him to be accounted for everything we have said, everything we have done, and will e it will e either be something that will, inshallah, with Allah's mercy, be the cause for us to enter Jannah, or it could be something that will lead us to the hellfire. May Allah wa ta'ala make us from those who enter, the jan who enter Jannah and who are protected from the hellfire. The author then says, وَبَعْدُ فَالْعِلْمُ عَظِيمُ الْجَدْوَى لَسِيَمَ الْفِقْهُ أَسَاسُ التَّقْوَى Now the Shaykh رحمه الله, he says, وَبَعْدُ Now I want you to remember this, and this is as a qa'id, as a principle, because you're going to see this very regularly. If you look at the nadm, you see that the Shaykh says, وَبَعْدُ He used a wow. This wow is called نَائِبَةُ النَّائِبَة It's called نَائِبَةُ النَّائِبَة This wow. وَبَعْدُ نَائِبَةُ النَّائِبَة why is it called na'iba? Because this wow is taking the place of amma. It should have been what? Amma ba'du. So that's why it's, that's why it's na'iba. So why are you saying na'iba? Tun na'iba. Why are you saying it twice for? Because the amma is also a, it's taking the place of mahma yakun. Mahma yakun min amrin. So wa ba'du, the, the wow here has taken the place of amma. And amma, has taken the place of Mahma Mahma. It's taken the place of Mahma. And Amma is used, Amma wa ba'du is used as it said, Kalimatun, it's a word, Yu'ta that is used, Lenin tiqali min uslubin ila akhar. It is used when you want to move from one type of speech that you are in into a different type of speech. So, what is it that he's leaving and how he's going into? He is now wants to leave the muqaddimah, the introduction of praising Allah wa ta'ala, sending salutation on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and on the Prophet sallallahu family and close relatives and also the, the companions of the Prophet and the ones who follow them in good. After I've said all of that, I now want to move on to, he's trying to say, on to what? He wants to move on to clarifying to us what is it that this book is about? What field does it deal with? He's now going to give us another explanation, which is that this field is on a particular science of the religion. The religion has many sciences. As he says, وَبَعْدُ فَالْعِلْمُ عَظِيمُ الْجَدْوَى لَا سِيَّمَ الْفِقْهُ أَسَاسُ التَّقْوَى الْفِقْهُ So this field is fiqh. Good. And as I said before, and I'm going to explain everything here, inshallah ta'ala, word for word, but so he's moved away from what? He's moved away from the muqaddimah. So that's why the amma ba'du. That's why the ba'du is used. Scholars, they disputed who's the first person to say it. Jara al-khulfu amma ba'du man kana qailan amma man kana badi'an. Laha khamsu aqwalin wa dawudu aqrabu. Wa kanat lahu faslu al-khitabi wa ba'dahu. Faqaysun, fasahbanun, faka'bun, fayarubu. There are opinions. There are five views of who it is. Some said Qais, some said Sahban, some said Ka'ab, some said Ya'rub, and the last one is Dawood. But the poet says, Jara al-Khulfu, disputation came occurring to Amma ba'du man kana badi'an, Amma man kana qailan. Who is the one who first said it? Laha khamsu aqwalin. It has five opinions. Wa Dawoodu aqrabu. Dawood seems to be the closest. And they said that it was what? Yeah, صح? We gave him Fasl al-Khitab. So they said that's what it was. 
according to their opinion. So the Sheikh says, وَبَعْدُ فَالْعِلْمُ So now, before I go into explaining it word for word, what has he just now left? Because I said, أَمَّا بَعْدُ أَمَّا وَبَعْدُ is used as what? It is used as لِلْإِنْتِقَالِ مِنْ أُسْلُوبٍ إِلَىٰ آخر. If you want to move from one form of speech and you want to go to something else. In other words, in English, it means to proceed. To proceed from what I was saying. He's now going into telling you that this book that he's going to, or you're going to study, it deals with a particular field which is al-fiqh. But he left it kind of general. Because he said, لَا سِيَّمَ الْفِقْهُ أَسَاسُ التَّقْوَى الْفِقْهُ But we said last time that the fiqh is of types. Did we not say that? We said it's of types. We said, for example, there is fiqh when it comes to masail which are masail such as books of books of muqtasarat. You read, for example, Zad, ah, Muqtasar al Khalil, ah, Minhaj Nawawi, rahimahullah. Ya Muqtasar al Qaduri. You go to these books. They are books which are muqtasarat, summarized, bridged fiqh books, which give you the furu' of the masail. They give you every mas'ala, mas'ala, mas'ala. And then the second one we said was what? The second path of fiqh was what? Ahadith al-ahkam. The books that are written, hadith that are compiled, that are brought together, and they're particularly in jurisprudent rulings, such as Bulugh al-Maram, and Umdat al-Ahkam, and Al-Muntaqa, the granddad of Abu Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah ta'ala. Yeah? Um, and Al Muharrar ibn Abdul Hadi and others. These are Ahadith al Ahkam. Even Sunnah Abi Dawood. Well, Ahadith al Ahkam. And then we said after that is the way which is Fiqh an Tariq al Qawaid al Fiqhiya. Qawaid al Fiqhiya, the person learns it. That is the way we're doing it now. And then the other one was what? Qawaid al Suliya. Am a Takhriju al Usuli al Furu' Isah. We said that. And these are all ways, طرائق في خدمة الفقه الإسلامي. These are all ways that serve fiqh. So when he says, لا سيما الفقه, this عموم, even as general fiqh, he specifically means القواعد الفقهية, that type. And not all the other types, because that's not what we're studying in this book. This book is particularly for قواعد الفقهية. So that's what you have to understand. فالعلم فالعلم وبعد فالعلم عظيم الجدوى فالعلم دواء دفاء إن الواد فالعلم دفاء إن ت واقعة دفاء إن ت falls as a جواب الشرط as a جواب الشرط and I said before that the wow is a نائبة النائبة صح and it takes the place of amma, and amma is a na'ibatun an mahma, mahma yakun min shay'in ba'du, ba'du. That's how it should have been. Look at it, mahma yakun min shay'in, mahma yakun min shay'in ba'du. All of that, mahma yakun min shay'in, it all became amma, that's it. And the amma of three letters, hamza, mim, alif, Got turned into وَبَعْدُ So it's نَائِبَة Of a نَائِبَة Very good So the fa here Is The جواب الشرط of أَمَّا بَعْدُ فَالْعِلْمُ The fa we explained it الْعِلْمُ This alif alam in ilmu What is it? This alif alam What is it? It's عَهْدِيَة It is what? It is Ahdiyyah. Ahdiyyah means what? Ahdiyyah is the Alif al lam that is used in a indefinite noun, but it becomes known and it is something you and the person who is speaking are, are aware of who it is. For example, if we're talking about Gulad all day, and then after that, we, we say, Ar-Rajulu. Who is the first one whose mind's going to... Who is this Ar-Rajulu for? It is for him. Good. 
هذا هو it is what it is him قلت واضح is it clear هذا هو it becomes him so this العلم we know what knowledge is referring to he is not referring to تفسير and he is not referring to حديث and he is not referring to فقه He's referring to, sorry, he's not, sorry, he's referring to fiqh, specifically fiqh. Good. That's one opinion we can take. We can also say, now let's, why are we going to narrow it down to fiqh? Why don't we say he's referring to ilmu shar'i? And that is better. Because what comes later encompasses all the shar'i knowledge. Because he's ba'du fal ilmu azim al jadwa. So it's better that that alif al lam is ahdiyah. And it means al ilmu shar'i. The religion based knowledge and not scientific and academic knowledge. No, he's not talking about that. And since fiqh falls under the ulum al it's better that we take it as ulum al sharia. That he's talking about al ilmu ay al ilmu sharia. That's what he means. Whether that ilm is a the ulum which are maqasid or those ulum which are the instrumental knowledge of, or the objective knowledge. It doesn't matter whichever of those it is. فَالْعِلْمُ knowledge. ها. What is it? عَظِيمُ الْجَدْوَى ما معنى عظيم؟ فعيل من العظمة. It is great. Great in what? الجدوى. The word الجدوى is العطية لغة. In the original meaning it means العطية. It's to give. لكنه إبك... استعارة happened and it means here عظيم الجدوى أي عظيم النفع والفائدة of great benefit great benefit and and of great uh, yeah of great of great benefit فالعلم knowledge عظيم الجدوى أي عظيم النفع والفائدة it's beneficial now this benefit can be in this world. And نفع في الدنيا benefit in this dunya. وفي الآخرة and in the hereafter. How is it good in this dunya? في تصحيح العقيدة you correct your عقيدة and you perfect your belief of Allah تبارك وتعالى تعالى. And if you perfect your عقيدة, what do you live? A good life. Allah تبارك وتعالى says من عمل صالحا من ذكر أو أنثى وهو مؤمن. فلنحيينه حياة طيبة ولنجزينهم أجرهم بأحسن ما كانوا يعملون. لا أي سامرايز بوث أوف ذيم. فلنحيينه حياة طيبة. they come with iman. Allah said we give them a good life. ولنجزينهم أجرهم بأحسن ما كانوا يعملون. and the day of judgment we're going to reward them in the best of rewards. so علم has worldly benefit and it has also got benefits of the hereafter. ولذلك ابن القيم رحمه الله علامة ابن القيم رحمه الله in his noble book مفتاح دار السعادة his noble book مفتاح دار السعادة he mentions that he says يكفي للعاقل اللبيب the person who's smart the person who's clever enough for him to know and يدرك أهمية العلم enough for him to know the value and the status of knowledge is that no action of yours will be accepted, he says. No act of worship of yours is going to be accepted. إلا إذا تحقق فيه شرطان Unless two conditions are found in it. And then he says, what are they? وهما الإخلاص, they are sincerity. والمتابعة, and is to follow the Prophet. And then he goes on saying, والإخلاص لا يمكن إخلاص. It is come with sincerity. You are not able to do it. To distinguish it from showing off and uh, out doing it out of conceit. You can't unless you, unless you have correct knowledge. And you can't also know that which the messenger was upon, which is the second condition, which is al-mutaba'ah, following the Prophet. You can't know what the Prophet was upon in order for you to follow him, alayhi salatu wassalam, unless you have what? Ilmun sahih, correct knowledge. So that enough shows you the importance and the need that you have for knowledge. The need that you 
have for knowledge. And then these are two asas, these are two strong foundations for an act to be accepted by Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. So he says, فَالْعِلْمُ knowledge عَظِيمُ الْجَدْوَى أي عَظِيمُ النَّفْعِ It's benefit. لا سيما لا سيما لا سيما We can read it in two ways. We can make it مخففة ومشددة We can say لا سيما We can say it like that if we want to. Placing a shadda on the ya. Or we can say لا سيما Without placing a shadda on the ya. Both of them are Acceptable in the language. They're both accepted in the in the language. The word asiu asiu is what in the Arabic language is al mithlu. It is like. Are you with me? It, it means like. Very good. And the ma in it. La siya. We know what the word asiu. We know what it means. But what does the ma' mean? The ma' can either be za'idah, as it's in the qamus, or it can be a mawsula, a connective. It can be, as Hafid al-Hajar, rahimahullah, says. That is the view, Hafid al-Hajar holds that it's a mawsula. The grammarians, there are two opinions regarding la siyama. Ulama'i ahlu kufa, the people of kufa, the Madhab Ahl Kufa, they are of the opinion that La Siyama is Adatun Min Adawat al It is it is a exception. The word La Siyama is like Illa. It's like the word Illa. Wa It takes like exception. You see, they have that opinion that it's an exception, the ulama ahl kufa. As for if it's an exception, then that means that it is not part of what's been mentioned. Sah? Are you with me? If I say ja al qawm, the people came. Illa zaydan except zayd. Has zayd come? Is the ja the coming? Does it work for zayd? Ja al qawm, the people came. Illa zaydan except zayd. Is zayd? From those who have come. So based according to the uh, Kufiyin, La Siyama is like Illa. So it won't enter into the thing that's been spoken about. It's an exception. Whatever comes after is an exception. Are you with me? So based on that for them, it will be La Siyama. فَالْعِلْمُ عَظِيمُ الْجَدْوَى لَا سِيَّمَ الْفِقْهُ إِلَّا الْفِقْهُ Fiqh is not beneficial for them. This is, what, this is a problem here now. فَالْعِلْمُ knowledge عَظِيمُ الْجَدْوَى لا سيما الفقه except فقه فقه is not of but the author doesn't have that opinion he doesn't hold that opinion he's not of the opinion of the Kufiyin in this matter he's of the opinion of the Basriyin and that's the strongest opinion it is the opinion held by Sibawayhi and the Jumhur al-Basriyin the Jumhur al-Basriyin and also Sibawayhi that the, the لا سيما is not Adat min adawat al istithna, that it's not. So, in other words, it means that it's not going to, you can't take it out from it. It's not an exception. In, in other words, it enters it. That knowledge ha, is knowledge of the sharia is what? Azim al jadwa. It's very beneficial. La siyam al fiqh, especially fiqh. So it becomes especially fiqh. It becomes especially uh, al-fiqh. And that fiqh is from those things that are very beneficial. They are very beneficial. We said before, when we said alhamdulillah illadhi faqahana, remember when we were speaking about alhamdulillah faqahana, we said that the fiqh that's used here, we should take it as the technical meaning. Sahih? Because it can be bara'at istilal for us. That meaning of bara'at istilal to come out of it, we've chosen to say la siyama al fiqh. Fiqh means al ilmu bil ahkam al shar'iya al amaliya al muktasaba min adilatiha tafsiliya. 
That's the definition that we've taken. That is the choice that we have taken, that the fiqh here, it means the technical meaning of the word fiqh. And we don't need to go over the definition of what is meant by fiqh. We already have taken it before. La siyama. La siyama. La siyama al fiqh. Especially fiqh. Ah, especially al fiqh. So when we say al fiqh, especially al fiqh, fiqh, as I said before, remember, it was what? Hukum? Shari, right? Fiqh is a hukum shari. It is Jews Islamic jurisprudent rulings. So here we drop. Ahkam which are aqliya. And we also drop what? Ahkam which are adiyya. Ahkam which are adat. And norms and customs of the people. They're not in here for us. And they don't. We also stay with ahkam which are wad'iyya. Such as the fa'il is marfu'ah. It's qawa'id principles that are placed. Good. This is specifically ahkam which are shar'iyya. La siyam al-fiqhu, especially al-fiqh. Asas al-taqwa. It is, asas means what? A aslu taqwa The foundation of al-taqwa. Foundation of al-taqwa. <coughs> and taqwa means what? It's a comprehensive term, by the way. Just like istiqamah is a comprehensive word. So is, so is, um, so is uh, at taqwa And I said it is from those words, إِذَا اجْتَمَعَا إِفْتَرَقَا وَإِذَا اَفْتَرَقَا اجْتَمَعَا وَالتَّقْوَى كَلِمَةٌ جَامِعَةٌ The murad that the author means by it here is إِمْتِثَالُ الْأَوَامِرُ وَاجْتِنَابُ النَّوَاهِ In summary, that the taqwa here means what? Following the commands of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala and staying away from the prohibitions, the things that Allah has prohibited from you. لا سيما الفقه Then fiqh is أساس التقوى. Fiqh is the foundation of taqwa. You with me? لذلك محمد بن حسن الشيباني they asked him to write a book. Ah, uh, in what? They asked him to write a book in الزهد, and he said, I wrote a book in what? In Buyu, I think. He said, I wrote a book in Bayah. They told him to write a book about al wara and Zuhd, aesthetism. So he said, I wrote a book in Buyu. Because it's knowing the halal and the haram and having knowledge of it and then implementing it is what fiqh. And that is what taqwa is. So fiqh, the foundation of fiqh and a person who's meant to be called a faqih is a person who's what, my brothers? And sisters who are listening, the foundation of it is what? It's a person who possesses taqwa. It's a person who implements that which they, that which they have. La siyam al fiqhu asasu taqwa. There are many ways we can grammatically look at it. There are three grammatical ways we can say it. One is weak, very weak, and two are strong. You can say la siyama. Al-fiqhu. There's three ways of saying it. Two are correct and one is incorrect. لا سيما الفقه. You can say it like that. So if it's like that, then it will become what? Fiqh is a is a khabarun mubtada'un mahdhuf. In other words, it's not. It's a khabar. So where's the mubtada'? The mubtada' is hidden. So where is the mubtada' that's hidden? هو الفقه. So it's لا سيما هو الفقه. هو الفقه. The هو is the مبتدأ. <coughs> Very good. As another way you can say it, and that is لا سيما الفقه. And place a فتحة on top of the ها. This is the one we'll say is not permissible to do it. Because if it was permissible, it would become a tamiz. And if it's a tamiz, if it's a tamiz, then it can't. It has to be a what? A nakira, and it has already an alif and lam in front of it. Are you with me? The second, third word, which is also strong, is la siyam al fiqhi, al fiqhi. 
and this is that it's mudaf uh, ilayhi and the ma is za'ida the ma is what the ma is za'ida very good wa ba'du fal ilm azim al jadwa la siyama this la we saw yesterday in daf'iha min al dirab correct this la is nafiyatul lil jinsi nafiyatul jinsi has its ism the ism for it is wa sayyi sayyi is the ism of the la al nafiya al fiqh we chose to make it a what the first opinion inshallah ta'ala which is la siyama al fiqh we make it inshallah khabar mubtada mahdhuf uh, that's what we chose it asas al taqwa asas al taqwa is a na'tun lil fiqh it is a description of fiqh it's describing what fiqh is which is that taqwa is the foundation it's the foundation of fiqh is taqwa 